I have judged books by their covers on this channel or specifically talked about what I do and don't like in a cover. Today I'm gonna be doing something a little in that same vein because there is another thing that we look at when it comes to determining whether or not we're going to pick up a book without knowing anything about it. Apart from the cover, we look at the title. So today I'm gonna be judging books by their titles. These are all books that I haven't read and don't know anything about and I'm gonna be going off of Amazon's recommendations to me, which one of the things that I've learned while preparing for this is that Amazon really doesn't know what I'm into. So these are gonna be some interesting recommendations. I am specifically looking at both science fiction and fantasy because those are the genres that I tend to read the most. So I imagine that they are the most likely ones to have titles that actually entice me. So we're gonna find out whether or not that's the case. I'll be looking at about 10. And just to be clear, I'm judging exclusively the title. I'm also in no way endorsing any of these books. If I happen to like the title, that doesn't mean that I'm going to end up liking the book or anything of that nature. But maybe I will find a book through this process that I actually think is interesting. We're gonna see. I don't have very high hopes. So the first one is The Peacekeeper, Peace, Peacekeeper. So the first one is The Peacekeeper by B.L. Blankard. Blankard, I think. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Bl Blankard. One thing I wanna point out here is that it's a little strange because the text on Amazon says peacekeeper as one word, and then the cover makes it look like it's broken up into two different words. That's not super important, but it does look a little bit odd and is kind of inconsistent. That's not what I'm judging here. I'm just judging the title itself. It's itself. That's not what I'm judging here. I'm just judging the title itself. If I'm being completely honest, I feel like Peacekeeper is pretty generic. It's a very average title, and I feel like it could apply to just about any book. It doesn't entice me to learn all that much more about the story, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a pretty average title. It's not too much of a mouthful, but it doesn't really entice me to look at a book and think of it as unique. So three stars to the Peacekeeper title. The next one has the same issue. It is The Druid by Jeff Wheeler, Joey Wheeler's estranged father. Does this title entice me to go and pick up the book or look at it or make me wonder what it's about? Not really. I feel like it kind of just tells me that the book is about a druid. And at that point, I've already read about plenty of druids in fantasy. Why would I go and pick up a book about this particular druid that's just called the Druid. I'm gonna go ahead and give it three stars again. It's not a terrible title. It's not great. It doesn't make me want to go and learn more about the book. Okay, now this next one is definitely a sign that Amazon doesn't know what to recommend to me because it is called Friday the Witch Teenth, and it is like the 20th book in a serial series, which I don't have a problem with serial series. I do have a problem with serial series that have the description of this one. It just really is not the sort of thing that interests me. And the title honestly is just bizarre. My thought was that if this was like a comical book or it was meant to be funny, then I think the title would work because the title doesn't make any sense and it's really absurd. But upon reading some reviews and some thoughts from people who are readers, all of them like it, not because it's funny, but because they think it's serious or they take it seriously or they feel like it's this riveting story. And so I'm sitting here thinking, okay, but it's called Friday the Witch Teenth. That really kind of makes me think it's some sort of goofy parody book or something. If that were the case, I probably wouldn't mind so much, but because it's meant to be taken at least a little bit seriously, I think that's a little too much, and the title is just a little bit cringeworthy. I'm not gonna say that it's the worst title I've ever read, but I'm gonna give this one two stars. Oh, and Friday the Witch Team is by Amanda Emily. By the way, I'm gonna have links to all of these in the description down below, so if there are any of these that actually do entice you and make you want to read them, then by all means, go and check them out. This next one was so close to being a great title. In fact, the full title hadn't expanded until I clicked on it, so when I I just saw the abbreviated title, I thought, oh, that's a pretty good title. But unfortunately, uh, it got a little bit longer. So this is going to be The Twice Scorned Lady of Shadow by Annette Marie. Do you see just the way that I said that, how it could have been a good title and then it suddenly wasn't? The Twice Scorned Lady of Shadow. It's really close. The Twice Scorned Lady, I think, would be a really interesting title that would make me wonder what the book is about, apart from A Twice Scorned Lady, but instead it's The Twice Scorned Lady of Shadow, and that sounds like the campiest, most fan y book title I can think of. For one, it's a little bit too long for my taste, and then for another, adding on the suffix of shadow is something that a lot of people just kind of tend to do when they're not sure what to add as far as titles are concerned. Not just to titles of books, but to titles of artifacts or characters. You just add shadow shadow to it and suddenly you think that you have some sort of ominous tone when in fact Twice Scorned Lady was ominous enough and then you add of shadow to that and I'm I, I'm out. I, I'm not interested anymore. It's overkill. It's overkill and it reads as being melodramatic. So unfortunately, while this would have been probably closer to four or five stars if it had just stopped at the word lady, I'm gonna have to give this one two stars and move on. Next up is uh, System Escape by Tom Lark. Larcombe. I'm pretty sure it's Larcombe. Tom Larcombe, I think. 
if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure I'm getting the title of the book correctly. System Escape. This one actually interested me, but not because of the title, unfortunately. It interested me because the title doesn't really seem to match what the cover is. The title suggests some sort of science fiction, maybe cyberpunk sort of story, while the cover looks a little more fantastical than that and has some sort of Cthulhu-like being rising out of it. So the combination of the two made the book a little bit more interesting to me. But the title itself is very general and generic and doesn't really tell me a lot about the book and it tells me even less about the book because when I go back and I look at the other titles all of them just have the word system and then some other word tacked onto it. System Escape is just one of many books in the series. There is a gnat and is driving me crazy. But I will say that the title was enough to kind of pique my interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it three stars instead of two. So three stars to System Escape as a title for this book. Okay, now this next one. I know I have a juvenile sense of humor, but you, you can't tell me that they didn't know what they were doing when they called this next book Tongue Eater by John Bierce. Byers, Bierce, John Bierce. Tongue Eater. I mean, I was pretty sure this was probably some sort of erotic fantasy based on that name, but from reading what I read about the book, it isn't erotic fantasy, it just has the name Tongue Eater for other reasons. Um, that's kind of an odd title for a fantasy book, but it is memorable. It is something that when I tell you Tongue Eater, I imagine that out of all the titles I'm gonna read to you today, Tongue Eater is the one that you're going to remember the most. So it does accomplish that. It becomes a memorable title and it is very easy to look up. So if somebody tells you, hey, you need to check out the book Tongue Eater, you can look that up and you're probably going to find this one. Although I am dead certain that there is tons of tongue eating erotica out there. Oh man, Rick, this is pretty weird. Don't judge, Morty. So yes, it does accomplish some of the things that a book title should. It gets you interested in what the book is about, and it is memorable, so that when you tell people to check it out, it's probably going to stick in their brains. But even then, it's just such an odd and bizarre title that I myself, if I saw that on the shelf, I wouldn't go and pick it up. Truthfully, I would assume it might be in the wrong section. So Tongue Eater, I'm gonna give three stars to. Next, we have a title that I do largely like. It's called The Last Witch of Calhoun Holler by Michael, by Michael Anderl. Ander Anderlay. It's either Michael Anderl or Michael Anderlay. I really should have looked up how to pronounce these names before I started filming, if they even have name pronunciation guides. Michael Anderl. That sounds right. That's probably right. So this one is actually pretty close to being an excellent title, except that it commits a very common sin that is committed among writers and publishers. And that is bombarding the reader with detailed names of places or people or abilities or anything of that nature. You fill them with names that are unique to your world that the reader cannot instantly connect with. I need to be able to instantly connect with your title. I should even be able to instantly connect with the book blurb for your story. And unfortunately, that is just not the case with this book. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this, although those exceptions are beginning to dwindle. I think a new age of titling books and writing blurbs is coming about where people are a little more conscious of the fact that having to retain information about a book before they've even opened the first page is just going to turn somebody away from reading your story. So Calhoun Holler, the name of that place, honestly is kind of what kills this title a bit for me. If it had been something that I knew or something that exists in the real world or something that I am familiar with to some degree, then I probably would have been a little more interested in it. Or it could have just been a couple of words that are a little more commonplace. Callahan Creek or something along those lines. I'm familiar with the word Callahan and creeks are more common than hollers. So Callahan Creek would probably do better than Calhoun Holler in this regard. That's really just gonna be my personal opinion. I know some people probably love probably. I know that some people probably love having titles that have all of these unique names in them, but for me, it is a turnoff because it is just more information I have to retain and I haven't even really started reading your book yet. So while I do like the title of this book and it was enough for me to go and check out the blurb, I am going to end up giving it four stars. It's a pretty decent title. I just don't think it's gonna have the kind of appeal that it could have if the title were a little more accessible. This next one is a title for a book that I am definitely not going to read because I checked out the blurb of it and it is totally not something I'm interested in. It also is just another part of a long serial series, but ultimately I do like the title of it. I I just don't really think the story is for me. The title is Fight Where I Am by Martha Carr and Michael Anderl. Anderlay. Michael and Martha Carr and Michael Anderl. This dude's just popping up. Amazon really thinks I should read some Michael Anderl, I guess. I don't really think that Michael Anderl's books are the sort of books that I would read, but maybe somebody who is watching this would be interested in picking them up. But Fight Where I Am. I think that is a really interesting title. It opens up all sorts of questions, and it's something that I don't think I'm gonna see on every other book around it. We see all sorts of duplicate titles all the time, and Fight Where I Am isn't something that I think I've seen of late. It also kind of breaks the traditional formatting of titles. It doesn't have things like at or a or the in them. Instead, it is just a very straightforward fight where I am. That is the title of this book. It's very simple and it was enough for me to go and check out what the book was about. Again, 
it wound up not being my cup of tea, but I really liked the title and the title was enough to draw me into it. But all that said, I'm gonna end up giving it four stars. It is a pretty decent title and it got me to look at the book blurb. Okay, now this next one, definitely uh, not the kind of book that I will read, but if you are somebody who is interested in menopausal based science fiction stories about middle-aged soccer moms, I think, uh, this might be the book for you. It is called The Change by Kirsten Miller. Now this title, The Change, was enticing enough. But then I also noticed that it is subtitled a novel. So it's The Change, a novel. That tells me it's a standalone, which is great for an author that I don't already know. I'm not committing to anything more than one book. And if I do like this book from the author, I can probably go and find some other ones by this same writer. So The Change by Kirsten Miller. I really like that title. It's interesting. It doesn't tell me anything about the book, but it is enough for me to think, I wonder what that's about. What kind of change is taking place here? And while I'm not judging covers here, I will say I do really like the cover of this book. It's very simple and straightforward and leaves me with even more questions. I think it would totally stand out on shelves surrounded by fantasy. Unfortunately, if someone like me is enticed by a title like The Change and does like the cover and goes to pick up the book, they're going to find a blurb on the back that is absolutely not for them. This is not the kind of book for me. But as I said, if you are somebody who is looking for a superhero with menopause induced superpowers. I think that's what it's about. Honestly, I really, I kind of had a hard time getting through the book blur, but if that sounds interesting to you, uh, go and check it out. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and just give it four stars because it did entice me to go and check out what it was about, and it definitely stood out from the other titles that were around this. And that's actually going to bring me to the last title, which I think is probably the worst one. But before I get to that, I wanted to let you know that you can like, comment, and subscribe all at no cost to you, and all of those things greatly help me out. I've had an influx recently of support, and it means the world to me, so thank you so much for taking the time to do those things. And now let's get to the worst title of the bunch that I have picked out for today. And this is gonna be the worst title because it is following probably my least favorite trend in fantasy and science fiction right now. And that is having things like the blank of blank and blank. And by giving you that formula, I guarantee you that you have probably just thought of a ton of different books and series, all of which follow that same very basic formula. This book is Night of Masks and Knives by L.J. Andrews. Knight of Masks and Knives. Hmm. Is that going to stand out to me? Absolutely not. What it's going to do is look like all of the other books that are around it, which is really kind of what you don't want to do with a title. You want to stand out and be memorable. This just sounds like every other title out there. This is such a common trend and I really wish that it would die and it doesn't really have a lot of meaning. A lot of books that are titled this way have titles that are irrelevant to the story itself or if they are relevant, it feels very forced. On top of that, it is just really lazy. I can easily come up with a ton of titles like this. A lamp of tissues and curtains, a window of air conditioning and blankets, a door of microphones and cameras. There you go, I just created a trilogy for you. You're welcome. Obviously, because I've been ranting about it now for a bit, I really don't care for this, I don't like this title, I don't like this trend, and I'm really, really sick of seeing it. So I'm actually going to be giving this title one star because when I read a title like this, I instantly think I'm not even going to bother. I'm not going to bother because that title feels very low effort to me. So one star to the title, Night of Masks and... Night of... Night of Masks. I've already forgotten it. Night of Masks. Night of Masks and Knives. One star to that title. Please let the trend die. It has gone on for way too long. And that's it. Those are my subjective personal opinions on several book titles. I just went through some books that Amazon recommended to me. I clicked on their titles. None of them was a book that really wound up interesting me, which I think just says a lot more about Amazon than it does about me because I do review my books on Amazon and on Goodreads. So I feel like it should know what my tastes are at this point. It would be nice if they did. I don't know, maybe their algorithm needs some work. Thank you very much for taking the time to check this video and for sticking around until the end. If you'd like to see another video from me, you can do so by clicking up here. And until next time, bye.